The Old Testament is literally filled with life experiences from which we are to learn from. This evening, let us look at the experience of Leah. By studying Leah, we learn about a certain segment of the members of church, and we learn how to properly minister to them in times like these. Because we are all in some way or another like Leah, we can relate to her story and relate to her needs. We all know the story of this Old Testament woman found in Genesis chapter 29. Laban had two daughters. The older daughter's name was Leah, and the younger daughter's name was Rachel. Rachel was beautiful. Leah, however, is described as having weak or tender eyes. Jacob immediately fell in love with Leah, uh, Rachel, and he told Laban that he would work for him for seven years, and in exchange, he would marry Rachel. After seven years, Jacob was married, but he discovered in the morning that he married Leah, not Rachel. Jacob the deceiver was deceived. In her book, The Story of Redemption, Ellen White writes, when Jacob realized the deception that had been practiced upon him and that Leah had acted her part in deceiving him, he could not love Leah. Jacob eventually married Rachel, and in exchange for working seven years, this started the feud between both sisters. So what can we learn from Leah? What points can we take from her life experience that can help us in our spiritual journey? Although Rachel is described as a more beautiful sister, Leah's life offers some beautiful points that we can take into consideration. Because of the time factor, I'd like to briefly present three simple lessons from her life. Number one, desire. Leah had the basic human desire to be loved. Every human, whether living and if honest, will love and admit that they desire to be loved completely, wholly, unreservedly, passionately, for who they are rather than what they are not. Love is a basic human want. We need love. We desire to be loved. In Leah's case, she desired the love of her husband, Jacob. For some people, they desire the love of their parents. For some others, it is the love of their uh, children. While there are some people trying to earn the affection of a loved one, the desire to be loved is natural. In verse 30 of the chapter, it says that Jacob loved Leah, Rachel more than Leah, sorry. In the King James Version, you see the word hated. The word hated actually means love less. There's no record of Jacob hating Leah or mistreating her, he didn't disrespect her either. He just simply loved the visible things of Rachel. We have the same problems in our church today. We often love and recognize those with the visible things, those who can speak well, those who can sing well, those who give more. And we tend to hate or love the others less. My friends, We have to learn to love everybody. John 15, 12 tells us, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. The second lesson we can learn from this story is how to handle disappointment. If there is ever a factor that is consistent in the human life, it is that people will disappoint us. People will let us down. People will fall short of our expectations. As frail, finite creatures, We will disappoint others, and others will disappoint us. So how did Leah handle her disappointments? It's not written in the text. The answer is hidden between the lines. It is not in fussing or complaining. It is not in being angry or resentful. It is not in being bitter or mean. If you want to learn how to overcome disappointment, learn this lesson from Leah we see that she took it to the Lord in prayer. In other words, she prayed about it. Prayer is not just simply taking your wish list to God, it's also taking your disappointments. 
If you are experiencing disappointment, pray. How different the children of Israel would have been if they prayed for Moses instead of murmured against him. Church, rather than complaining when people don't meet our expectations, we need to pray. In verse 31 of the chapter, God stepped in to let Leah know she was valued by him by allowing her to bear children. Let's look at the names of her first two sons. Reuben, surely the Lord hath looked upon my afflictions, and therefore my husband will love me. Despite the birth of Reuben, Leah remained unloved. As the account continues, she conceived again, and when she gave birth to a son, she named him Simeon, because the Lord hath heard that I was rejected. Does this mean that Leah took her rejection to God in prayer? <laughs> Probably. So before long, Leah had another son. Again she conceived, and when she gave birth to a son, she said, now at last, my husband will love me, for I have borne him three sons. He will become attached to me. This time, Leah lowered her expectations. She would have been satisfied with just some type of genuine connection or some appreciation for bearing three sons. And it seems that she even learned to accept the fact that Jacob would never really love her as he did Rachel. Like Leah, we need to keep our weak eyes focused on God. Well, the Lord looked and the Lord hath heard. Leah was fruitful while Rachel was barren. Whenever we place people at the core of our desires, we will be disappointed. But when we take our disappointments to God in prayer, we will become fruitful while others will become barren. We will be in a time of plenty while others are in a time of want. We will be in a time of feasting while others are in a time of famine. The first lesson we learned was that we need to love everybody. The second lesson is that when we're disappointed, we need to take it to God. The third and final lesson we can learn from Leah is to make good decisions after being disappointed. This is a tough decision because often it is in disappointment that we make wrong and bad decisions. So what was the good decision that Leah made here? She chose to praise God. A change occurs in her focus after her fourth son is born. She conceived again, and when she gave birth to a son, she said, this time I will praise the Lord. So she named him Judah. Judah means praise. After years of pain, Leah's focus changed completely. She didn't even bother about Jacob. She put her eyes on God and thanked him for the children that she had bore. She knew that God had valued her because God had proved to her that he valued her and loved her in a way that was understood by that culture, by bearing children, six sons and one daughter to be exact. She became the mother of half of Jacob's children and half of the 12 tribes of Israel descended from her. She was devalued by her father, rejected by her husband, envied by her sister, but she was loved by God. Jacob chose Rachel, but God chose Leah. When we trust Christ, our relationship is established with him. He gives us the value and acceptance that we need to move from day to day. This is reason enough to constantly praise God. We need to realize that praise is 90% mental and 10% emotional. We praise God with our minds first before we ever praise him with our bodies. That is why it doesn't matter if you're an emotional person or not. It doesn't matter if you're an introvert or an extrovert. It doesn't matter if you're loud or quiet. It doesn't matter if you can sing or hum. All that matters is that you have the ability to think and that's the only prerequisite for praise. Praise is not a reaction. It's a decision. Helen Lamel was a talented young woman who studied music and was a beautiful uh, singer. She eventually married a wealthy European and later in life, like Leah, she had weak eyes. She eventually became blind. At this time, 
her husband left her, and many more midlife crises appeared. But at the age of 55, she read a statement that deeply impressed her. It read, so then turn your eyes upon him, look full into his face, and the things of this earth will acquire a strange new dimness. Helen then went on to write the beloved hymn, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. When we think how God has been good to us, we should praise him. Leah made the decision to praise God no matter what the circumstances. God is worthy to be praised through our unmet desires and through our disappointments. And the story of Leah shows us the perfect time to praise God, which is now. Now we must, as a church, learn to meet the basic human desire to love people. We must learn to take our disappointments to the Lord in prayer. And through our disappointments, we must make the decision to praise God. May that be our experience this evening, and may God bless you.